Hi, I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. You know, there's some dangerous stuff you can be doing out there. You could be juggling flaming chainsaws. How do you get into that? How do you think a guy gets started in the uh, flaming chainsaw juggling racket? It seems like a strange career path. Interesting. Like I was saying, things can be very dangerous. Spending. Spending is a very dangerous habit. Not a habit that's a good habit to form, to be quite honest with you. There have been a lot of really wealthy people all throughout history. There have been a lot of really wealthy nations, a lot of really wealthy companies that have spent their way out of existence or spent their way into the poorhouse despite having a vast amount of prosperity at one point in time and that is because spending is a very addictive sort of a thing and not a habit you want to put into your arsenal of habits when you're out there trying to make your fortune whatever that ends up being I don't want to harp on this topic, but I feel like one good solid conversation about this should get it out of the way. Look, when you're out there investing in whatever it happens to be that you're investing in, whether you're investing in the stock market, you're investing in real estate, I do not want you, for whatever reason, to be out there pilfering from the principal. That is not what you're supposed to be doing. Leave that principal alone. It is not your income to be taking from. I know I've said this once before, but it needs to be its own video and you need to heed this warning. If you don't take my advice on life insurance, if you don't like the way that I invest, I'm a very, very um, safe type of investor. If people don't like the way I do certain things, fine. This is a tried and true. This is, this is something I don't think is up for negotiation as far as I'm concerned. Don't take your principal out. Allow the compound interest and the time that that money is invested to work to your advantage. You're going to be the one that prospers at the end of this. Nobody else it's going to end up being you. It's going to give you more opportunity at a much earlier age in life to start making decisions based on comforts and wants instead of the things that you're working very hard for. I'm not saying that some people might not decide to retire and continue to work, but the options to be able to do that are integral. Messing around with the principal in any of your investments, no matter how well they're going, is not going to get you there. In fact, what you should be doing is be leaving that principal exactly where it is, the way it is. Keep your hands in your pockets, sir. Leave that money where it is. And then on top of that, you should be investing a little bit of money, even a nominal nominal amount of money, every month into that principal. So it is accumulating and on top of that, the compound interest and the time like we spoke about is working to your advantage. We do not want to be treating this money like it's a part of a budgeted amount of money. Like this is after net income. I want you to treat this like it sits in some sort of a dormant gray area that you can't do anything about between gross, the money you make, and then the, the stuff that comes off here, the government takes, you know, CPP and EI and they take their, their federal taxes and then I get my net in there. I want you to account for this money that every month is going to go into whatever investment it is that you're working on. Whatever it is that you're trying to build up this account, whatever nominal amount that you can put in there, if you can put $50 a month, $50 a month into a, let's say a $1,000 investment account, that's going to grow not only the compound interest from the gains, but the $50 a month. If we don't touch this, you would be surprised over time and the more time you give it, the earlier you start the better off you're going to be as this is going to grow in your favor considerably over a matter of time as you continue to invest and don't put your hands on the money. If you need more money, go find another job. 
find another way to bring in some sort of income. When we're talking about your retirement and ultimately when I'm talking about investing, I'm talking about you're either building a business or building a retirement and you are not worried about taking money for yourself. This is not about paying yourself. That's not it. That might, that's a totally different conversation where people want to go out and buy a Ferrari or do whatever they want to do with money so that they feel better about buying things. I'm not into teaching you about feeling things about your money. Your money doesn't feel things. You don't feel things. What you do is you hedge your life, the bets in your life the best you can so that at 50 years old, hoping that you started early, at 50 years old, 55 years old, 60 years old, you've reached a prosperity level where you do not have to go to work if you don't want to because more and more we continue to see people reach what's supposed to be their golden years, the years they've worked through their prime. I'm telling you, buddy, I'm in my prime and I am working like a dog. In my prime, I worked through those years. When I reach my golden years, options better be on the table for me. And options seem to be a fleeting thing for a lot of people who reach those years. We're trying to make sure that you have those options. So what we want to do is keep our hands off, continue to feed into the principle, and eventually we're going to create enough equity and assets and fixed income, whatever it ends up being that's going to create this feedback loop of passive income that continues to pay you every month. But because we've set aside our budget properly and we're able to live within the means that we've already got set out and we don't need any type of extra income from this as this passive income continues to build and continues to build we are able to continue to just take the passive income and reinvest it into the feedback loop and watch that continue to compound on itself buying us even more and more years of prosperity and choices and options and removing, like we've said, that anxiety that sits on a lot of people's shoulders because monetary issues just aren't a very friendly feeling. They break up a good majority of relationships. People have unbelievable life stressors because of their monetary issues. If we instill good habits now, we are going to be able to hedge those monetary stressors out of our life spending. Useless spending is a bad habit, please. Whatever, take one thing that you're doing. Take one action that you do that spends two, three dollars a day and just stop doing that action. Just stop for me. We've talked about a, da a daily planner. Write it in your daily planner. Make this a point on your goals list to be working on this and allocate that money into putting something into the principle of the investment that you're making right now and do that on a monthly basis. Remove that bad habit, instill a new good habit, and we will eventually find ourselves well on the road to creating these uh, self fulfilling, compound interest, giving, beautiful things that are investments. It's fantastic to have your money out there in the marketplace and doing what you need it to do, but you need to take the actions to see that through to the end. The thing to do is to go ahead and make the commitment to yourself that we are going to take this money, invest this money, and treat this money like a separate entity that we don't play with. Because like, let, let's take an example. You're going to find people that are going to go out there and they're going to make this extra money. And this extra money is going to end up becoming something that they use on a recurring basis. So not only is the principal not growing because they're taking the money out from the gains, but they're going to have months where things are down. But ultimately, they're going to look to that principal to be able to find that extra money that they were searching for, but because they were down, now they're eating into that principle. So you see how the bad habit has started a bit of a snowball effect in the wrong direction. And then when you think about how most people spend, when you start feeling yourself a little bit, you get a little bit of a endorphin rush. People tend to go out and find themselves in situations that maybe they wouldn't otherwise find themselves in if they weren't so guarded. They've let their guard down, things happen, and sometimes you can find yourself on long-term liability hooks 
when you find yourself to be in a monetary situation that you feel is fairly comfortable and you can be a little loose, you might decide to upgrade the vehicle that you're driving or purchase something on credit. And now you've got yourself on the hook for those gains every month or every quarter allocated already to a liability that you've just created for yourself. Let's not go out and start doing that. Let's not create any type of liabilities. Let's leave that money alone, act as if it's not there. The only thing that you should be doing with that money is being actively, mentally involved in how it needs to be invested or how those investments might need to be changing in the future. But otherwise, keep your hands to yourself. I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. If you don't know it already, like, subscribe, notification bell, comments, now you know. Keep your hands off that money. We're trying to get you to a nice, comfortable retirement, and we want you to have an excellent rest of your day.